Are we just bantering or are we just gonna dive right in? Three, two, one. Action! Explosions. Fan Dumps. damage. Dumps flying into the air. Fireworks. <laughs> Kick to the face. Wow. Yeah. That's a that's just a little tease, people, of what kind of show you yeah. guys are in store for tonight. Because we have a lot to talk about. And we have one amazing 80s and slash 90s icon to oh really God. talk about tonight. No, I, I would probably say more like an 80s, 90s, early 2000s. And now you think, you think he made it to early 2000s? This has he ever stopped, really? No. No, he no. didn't. Uh, if you'd like to know who we were talking about, well, you're just going to have to wait and find out. But yes. it's somebody awesome. I'm going to give you a hint. Yeah. It's that person. Yeah. That's some pretty wicked splits. For all you iTunes listeners, you should be watching on YouTube and you would totally understand. Yeah. Brian Brian is showing a Master Chief doing the splits. So. Yeah, my brand new Master Chief action figure. I was Not doll. Straightforward from the Whatever. splits. Strike, kick, punch, huh! Where's Cortana when you need her? I got Wonder Woman. Yeah. Sometimes Cortana just annoying shit. Yeah. Cortana's always kind of getting in the way of things. She's trying to stop Master Chief from doing what he really wants to. Mm-hmm. You can't tell him what to do. Trying to be all up in his business. He's like, Cortana, I went to, like, Navy SEAL super training. I'm a Master Chief. Look at me. I got this sweet robot body armor. I got I got sweet robot glutes. Look at that. I got, I can, wow. I'm like, eight feet tall. I can shoot an entire army. With this gun on my back, I only have to pull it down. Look, look at that. You know, I finally, uh, I finally watched the Fall of Reach, dude, on awesome. uh, Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that, was that the that stop was... motion thing? What's that? Is that the stop motion cartoon deal? No, it was the animated one. Oh, I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, it was actually really good. It's on Netflix, huh? It's on Netflix, you say? Let me look here. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of Halo movies on there. Don't be looking at it now, Brian. We're doing a I'm show. I'm not looking at it now. You stalled. Dance. Do something funny. You know, I only have so many things that I can pull out of my rabbit's hat. Oh, wait, no. My magic hat. Pull out rabbits. I need my co-host to help me before I just dissolve into a big pile of shit. Well, Brian. I'll be damned. Halo! The Fall of Reach has been added yeah. to my Netflix. What do you think I was lying? That was a terrible stall. You know, whatever. Hey, everybody! <laughs> Welcome to another episode of... The Geek Dad Report, bitches. You gotta say that with more enthusiasm. Hey, Welcome, man. everybody, to the 68th episode of... The Geek Dad Report. That was better. Whatever. Anyway, I anybody who's watched that. the Geek Dad Report, I Ryan, knows that we're the one show dedicated, formulated, specially created to talking about Master Chief's sweet glutes while he's doing a vertical splits. Yeah, and and Brian also doesn't have a, a wife and kids that are sleeping in the next room, so he can be as loud as he wants. But and me. Anybody who knows me, Horace Listen, knows yeah. that I am very loud. Yeah, and, Brian. Uh, if Brian can't hear his own voice, no. then. It's just, it's not a party. No, we'll talk no. about parties later. Somebody had a question about that. <laughs> uh, you got to interrupt me right in the middle. We're the one, hang on, hang on. We're the one show dedicated for uh, specially created, Master Chief Splits, Vertical, bleh. Oh, yeah. and bringing you the information you need to know so you can keep your valuable time just that valuable. Uh, I'm Ryan Weston. That is Ryan I'm Thomason. I'm Ryan Thomason. Hello. And we are Please. here to once again give you everything in the world of the nerd and the geek and the pop culture that you need to know so you can tell well, Bob and Accounting yeah what am I interrupting you too much tonight is that no, just go ahead man is that what's do, happening do your thing what no go ahead it's all you it's uh. about you Ryan this is your show I'm just back here playing with my dolls <laughs> oh. looking, looking at Netflix Trying Chief. to find new stuff you're that you're so gonna sissy. watch tonight. I know, Brian. You're my best. You're my best. You're my best Spartan number two. Oh, thanks, Master Chief. That means a lot to me. 
Well, well just in case anybody else wants to know, you can find us on Twitter at the Geek Dad Report, Facebook at the Geek Dad Report, on WatchPlayRead.com, PodHell.com, and uh, you can also find us on iTunes as the Geek Dad Report. Brian West is on Twitter at BrianWest53, and you can find me at uh, Big Bruiser. And um, we don't have an Instagram or a Snapchat, and we do definitely not MySpace. Um, Dude, I totally got a MySpace account. Is that even a thing, My my MySpace account has a GIF of a stormtrooper, like going doggy style on this robot. It's so awesome. (laughs) I think mine had like a song that played when you first looked at it, and then as you scrolled down, it went to a different song, and then a whole bunch of like sparkly GIFs and weird shit. Oh, MySpace. I don't miss MySpace. I feel like yeah. there's probably half the people watching us who don't even know what that is. Bro, you know that one fuckhead that started it? He's got, he got like a Tom? billion dollars or something when he sold it. It was Tom. That, Everyone had to be Tom's Tom. Tom. It's Tom. Yeah, and, it, and that fucker is like, I, he's got like an Instagram account now. It's like all he does is just travel around the world taking photos. A dick. I hate Tom. You I know, know what? Well, you if know you know watch our show, Tom. you goddamn know more than Tom does about pop culture, movie news, and fucking Master Chief doing the splits, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Damn you, Tom, and your billions of dollars, and your probably 32 supermodel girlfriends yeah. in each country. That shooting, you shooting photos in Iceland and. Guess what, Tom? How... You've been moved from my top seven to my bottom seven. Oh, shit. Snap. Boom. Oh, mic drop. I'm, I'm tipping my mic over right now. Just got what? Bitch slap, Tom. Yeah, but you can still follow us, Tom. You can get yeah. if you like to. You can you can earn our you can earn our friendship back if you ever had it in the first place. But you know, we we'll to talk about that. Yeah. You know, think about it, though, Tom is kind of a douche. Guy likes to he like makes himself one of your top top friends when you first sign up for MySpace. What a jerk. Yeah, like I don't really have any friends, so it was okay for me. Yeah, I, was, I don't think anybody did. It was MySpace, dude. <laughs> 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 Alright, anyway. We should probably dive into the yeah, show. We've rambled not long enough. Get laid with your MySpace page. That was definitely. I just for remember sure. people like your girlfriend would always be like, "I better be your top friend on MySpace." <laughs> like, sure you are. Like, yeah. Whatever. Anyway, you got any uh, geek dad moment of the week, Ryan? Yeah, we. Um, I was watching, uh, having a little TV time with my kids, and. Uh, Lincoln wanted to watch one show, then they wanted to watch a different show, so I said, both of you guys just shut up, I'm picking up a show. So I was looking around on Netflix, and um, I came across Animaniacs, and they would never watched it before, and so I just turned on the first episode, and holy shit, like my, Lincoln is um, eight, he'll be nine in September, and you forget how much shows that we had as the animated shows they were not 100% kid shows. No. And they did, they did not hold back on, like, on jokes that where you actually had to think and stuff like that. It wasn't, like, forced, you know, like, put on a platter for you to... But my, my oldest guy, he was laughing his fucking ass off. Well, the and my, my, is my, great, man. They got the Godfather of Pigeons, the Godfellas. Yeah. Um, they the were, Godfeathers. They were fighting and... Uh, but it was like the first episode was more just introducing Jacko, Wacko, and Dot. Dot. And like my daughter had a big smile on her face, and she caught some of the jokes. Like, like my son didn't really understand the you know the sexy nurse that comes in. He was just like, you know, it's like you, you know, yucky girls. <laughs> you know, the T doesn't quite get that kind of those kind of the humor on that. But God, he was laughing his ass off so much. Right when they were doing the jokes, I was like, so you you get some of the jokes? And he's like, oh yeah, this is funny. He's like, I'd I like to watch it. that. So, I realized that was on. You could find that. Uh, yeah, it's on Netflix. So like, I think I think Addison would probably like. I think it would probably go over Chuck's head, other than like some of the visual better. And I don't. I, not to bag on. And they you, even like, and they even said, well, this is a visual gag. <laughs> you know, not, like not to bag on. Not to bag on the new animated shows nowadays, because I mean, there's some really good ones, and and we're we're yeah. lucky to have some uh, great superhero cartoons and stuff like that. But some of these weird shows, like my kids watch Steven Universe versus the kid the dude like pulls a gym out of his belly button. It's so weird. Man. It's just so random. They watch the yeah. uh, oh my god, I could these kids are like meatballs. I I don't even know. 
It's so weird. Gumball? The, the yeah, what, the world weird, Gumball? weird world of Gumball or something like that. It's just yeah. a weird show. It's Animaniacs was your almost your classic comedy show, but it was, I don't know, it was ahead of its time a little bit. I, I thought it was a yeah. great cartoon. Well, and, and like, you know, they're doing an intro song, and, and, and I knew all the words to it <laughs> still. And they're like, jump, we got jump Bill Clinton out. on a sax, and they're like, they had no idea who the fuck For Bill 40 Clinton years, is. we've kept them locked away in the WB <laughs> <laughs> water tower. <laughs> and they just escape. Yeah. Yeah. But, they yeah, talk about, was... what did they lock them away? It's because they were too crazy? Is that what it was? Yeah, because because they created them and they were like destroying the studio lot and they were making them and so they burned and like put, got rid of like anything that had to do with them and stuff like that. Oh, and locked them away. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, that, and, was, Steven and then Spielberg. Locked... that was Steven Spielberg's brainchild. Yeah, it was so good. I mean, and it's it's so like meta about W. I forgot how meta it was about Warner Brothers. Yeah, did you ever it, watch the Tiny Toon Adventures? It. Oh, I love Tiny Toons. The movie, I was telling I like, my daughters about that, the movie. Uh, we were on a road trip, and on the uh, Tiny Toon Adventures movie, the actual featured, you know, the feature-length animated movie, there's a part yeah. where, uh, I forget who it is, it's Daffy Duck as a kid, when he's like, I want to get to Wally World Land, he's going with, with Porky Pig's family, and, yeah. uh, and he's hold, trying to hold his breath, and because we were, we were on a road trip, and we went through this tunnel, and my wife's like, hold your breath, and... I started laughing, and my kids were like, "What are you laughing?" I was like, "I just remember this cartoon, Tiny Toons Adventure," and they're like, "What's that?" I was like, "Well, when you, <laughs> there's a part in there when he's like, you know, if you hold your breath when you go through a tunnel, you, you know, you make a wish and you get your wish if you don't breathe." And so mm -hmm. he wants to get there because he he hates this trip that he's on with his friends. It's just an awful trip. It's kind of like uh, they're they're parroting National Lampoon's Vacation, and yeah. so he goes, he holds his breath. He's like, "I wish I could get to Wild World Land," and all of a sudden it says. You know, tunnel seven miles, or whatever. So he's holding his breath all day. I don't know. It's super funny. I got to show it to him. But you guys haven't seen uh, Tiny Toon Adventures? Watch Tiny Toon Adventures and definitely Animaniacs. So good pull. Oh yeah. There. Nice job doing the Lord's work. Uh, yeah, let's see. That's awesome. My geek dad moment of the week. Well, I didn't really have one this weekend because uh, old daddy here decided to get wasty pants on Saturday, and I spent all Sunday completely hungover. Like yeah. epically. I'm, I'm still a little bitter to not get one single drunk text from you. It would have not been drunk text. It would have been like dollar sign dollar sign hashtag five nine z zero zero l o l. Wow. Like a picture so was, of my kneecap or something. Dude, it was Ooh, bad. It was. Were, I made a business decision were you about halfway. Or was it by yourself? I was with a lot of people. Um, oh okay. I was probably the drunkest. I don't even know. I'm sure how. It was one of those mornings where you wake up and you. Wake up and you look around and you really don't know where yeah. you are. You're like, how did I get here? <laughs> Am I in my house? Yeah. Okay. Thank God. I was surrounded by friends and family and one loved ones because, you know, the first thing you do is you go to your phone and make sure you didn't randomly send people dick pics. And you're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> okay. I didn't post any, I didn't post any pictures of my ass on Facebook. I didn't like drunk message the Geek Dad report. <laughs> I'm just like, because I got control of a lot of media outlets, and I'm just like, oh. Yeah. So I decided early on that I was just going to put my phone away and just leave it there. So, Ryan, don't please um, don't take it personally. Um, had I started drunk texting somebody, you would have been my first uh, first drunk text recipient. Okay. That but, makes me feel a lot better. But yeah, I was in no shape or form to text anybody. So, needless to say, Sunday, I did not do anything with my kids. Their voices were like nails on a chalkboard. I had to take multiple naps <laughs> to recover from my drunken stupor on Sunday yeah. and Saturday night. I had a good time. It was fun. Um, I was with some really good friends. We, uh, we all got together for people in August who had birthdays. So it was like one big birthday party for a whole bunch of us. Uh, and I so we started drinking at four. It was like 95 degrees, which is really hot in Seattle. And so we just keep like, oh, I need a cold beverage. I need a cold beverage. And we were all making them like 50-50, you know, alcohol to beverage drinks. And so, yeah, by 6 o'clock, we were feeling pretty good. By 8 o'clock, we were drunk. And honestly, by midnight, I barely remember. I, I was up till after 2. I kind of remember some of it. <laughs> so I jumped in a pool of my underwear. You were up for another two hours after that. But yeah. you don't recall what you were doing. Yeah, apparently I proposed this to my wife, and she laughed at me, which is probably smart. <laughs> yeah, probably a good decision. But no, um, so Sunday we didn't do too much. But Monday... 
I remember that CW was uh, re-airing all the Supergirl episodes leading up to the Supergirl Season 2 premiere on CW, so I started recording those, and me and my daughter this week have been trying to get caught up on a lot of the episodes. Is that so. coming? That's coming soon. Yeah, uh, October. All the, all the CW shows are going to be airing in the first week of October. Oh, okay. So, you know, we'll have more of some CW stuff at the end of the show. Another tease. Yes. We're giving all kinds of teases. We got some, you know, splits... Things? Okay, that's terrible. We're yeah, going to be reviewing yeah. Jean-Claude Van Damme's what? new show on Amazon. Yeah. Yes. If, if you have not figured it out by now, <laughs> then yeah. we, the very not-so-subtle references that we were trying to make. Well, I guess we should just tell everybody what we're doing. So on the show today, everybody, yeah. we uh, we have a really fun show for you guys. we got a whole bunch of Ninja News. We, uh, we are going to be reviewing two shows from the Amazon pilot season right now, The Tick. And uh, Jean Claude Van Johnson. <laughs> yes, oh, we've got a lot. Oh my God, just, we've got so much to say about Jean Claude. Just thinking about it makes me laugh. Just, I, I'm so ready for that. We're, we, yeah, we're fully going to review both those shows. Uh, we got some recommendations, and then uh, maybe in the after show, we have a little bit of uh, comics you crave. We may do as well. So, oh, yeah. we also have. Guess what? Yet another giveaway at the very end of the show. So, <laughs> stay tuned. Pay attention. Stay. All yes. the way through. And don't just fast forward to the end. That's something yes. Bob would do. Fucking Bob. Yes. God damn it. You know Bob. what Bob can't do? Splits! Poof! <laughs> John Claude can't. Bob did, if Bob did a split, he might break. In Bob half. would split in half. Alright, well, uh, you got anything else or we should dive into Ninja News? Uh, Ryan? I should dive into the news. Hey, pick a color red, green, or blue? I'm gonna go with blue. All right, so time for Ninja News, Ryan. You know what that means, right? Your yes, favorite segment of the week, where me and you come up with awesome puns to go along with our action sequences. Yes. So I'm going to start with the double fist of indubitable, dubitably, dubitable information. <laughs> wow. No? You cannot have. You cannot get out of my cage this week. I, so, I can. Yeah. Alright, how about the double punch of knowledge? <laughs> <laughs> the judo chop? The double head chop judo chop of information. And? I will be doing the Cobra Kai leg sweep. You can't see my legs, so. <laughs> of learning. Hey, that wasn't bad. That was better than my indubitably doobly. I was really hoping you come Doobal. with. We're gonna add Doobal. one more. We're gonna. Oh. We're going to come up with one more. We're also oh. going to be doing the leg split of cultural pop information uh, knowledge awesomeness. The leg split with also the punch in the balls. Of Boom. Awesome. Punch shot. Punch right in the face. Right there. Look at that. Just like that. I'm not touching his... How do you punch someone in the face when you're doing a split? I don't know. Very carefully. <laughs> what do we All got? Man. What's our first thing on the news this week? I'll give you a hint what we're going to talk about first. Is, is, does it have to do with my color choice? It does. <laughs> I'm not talking just about Star Wars, people. We are, in fact, actually talking about lightsabers. If you have not hearing yeah. my cool, sweet Real lightsabers. Real motherfucking lightsabers. Ooh, Light look, my face is all flushing blue. It does make your face all blue. Uh, what we're talking about is Disney has filed a patent. And yes, yeah. it has to do with lightsabers. But no, they did not file a patent for lightsabers because it's Ryan... Mm. Told me earlier that technology apparently doesn't exist. This is quantum science, Brian. You, you know, I, power, I don't like all your power weird. Power source required to have that you you'd have to have a power source this big. It has to be even bigger than nuclear fission, not fusion. Fission. Are you done? Fission is the next step. So, listen. Yes. I don't need to talk to you about any of this anti-god mumbo jumbo witchcraftery. <laughs> Okay? We all know the guy created lightsabers so they exist. Okay. I'll just I'll let you have your day. I'm gonna get in my car and drive off the edge of the earth because it's flat. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, lightsabers. Disney has filed for lightsaber technology. Not the kind they could actually use to chop someone's arm off, but this may be yeah. even cooler than that. Um, they have filed for well, I don't know. I'm going to, we just tell people to stop. So basically, <laughs> what Disney has done is they are creating these drones 
that shoot laser beams out of them. Not like I'm going to burn you in the face laser beams, more like the kind you can't really see laser beams. And there's this room that's going to have this mist, right? Well, the beam is going to react with the mist, and you are going to have a custom-built lightsaber, much like this one probably. The light's up, you know, plastic, does something cool. But you will be able to see the light beams coming out of these drones, and you will be able to deflect them with your lightsaber. Yes. That is pretty wickedly awesome. Hang on. Siri! Off! Goddamn God Siri. Damn it. Oh, that wasn't a Siri. That was Alexa. Is it Siri or is I Alexa? I yelled at the wrong you got, you got all kinds of women. I got a lot of women in my house. I yelled at the wrong one. I'm totally going to pay for that. Yeah. And Alexa is you totally should... going to like set off the alarm later. Or turn my She's going to turn my <laughs> heater up to 140. When, when you... Alexa, off! When they start saying good morning, Dave. Now she says she can't. She's not quite sure how to help. Alexa, off. All right, she's off. Damn it, Alexa. Just like that, I turned a woman off. You have (laughs) way too many women in your life. I do. I'm sorry. It's a beautiful face. Yeah. Here, it's my winning personality. But so, so like you're saying, it's going to shoot laser beams that you can deflect. Unless you're me. And you're going blind. You'll just be laser beams, just like pegging you home, pegging me home. <laughs> well, I I, I will take you there, Ryan. No, um, <laughs> Disney has said that they wanted to make a more immersive experience, Star Wars experience when they when they open their Star Wars stuff in their mm-hmm. parks. So my guess is this is going to be this is a step in that direction. Um, yeah. Probably at some point down the road, you're going to have like a Jedi training room where you're going to be able to walk into this room with this lightsaber and. You know, swat yeah. laser beams and, back at and drones. And a thirty-year-old adult that's like pushing five-year-old kids aside because oh, you're yeah. like, "Screw you, stupid-ass kids! Get out of my way! I'm going to do the Jedi thing." I can't wait Not to you. take you because it's going to end up like a game of pinata. You're just going to swing it around wildly and see how many kids you can take <laughs> out. It's going to be great. I cannot wait. Me and you, buddy, we're going. Disney, if you're yeah. listening, we'll go. We will go. We will review that for you guys because we love you. Yes. But yeah, so um, my guess is the drones are gonna look a lot like those little training droids in the New Hope. They're like hover. Yeah, the little things that hover and shoot beams. So I don't know. I think it'll be pretty cool. I'm excited. Yeah. If you can't tell, I'm I'm worried about the price point. This is gonna be like a minimum like fifty to a hundred bucks. Ryan, look at my lightsaber. Look how big it is. Look at my face. It's so it's huge. Good. It's like on your face. I can see it right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey. And yes, Ryan is right. I'm sure this Disney immersive experience is going to cost you a ton of money. Yeah. But that's okay. Here's going to be me and Ryan at fir- first in line. Take my money. Make yeah. it a rain, Disney. Yeah. Woo-hoo-hoo. Yeah. Followed by like thousands and thousands shit. of nerds. This is just a drop in the hat. Look at this. Han Solo. Hey, Han. Do you think I should go to the Disney lightsaber battle? That's a yes. Up now? I can't tell. Shut up. That was a yes. There we go. Oh, like... Don't you judge Han. He's old. <laughs> He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't probably know where he is. <laughs> he's just really getting stabbed by his children. You know who does know where they are? The who? Guardians of the Galaxy. They do. They are in space the and in our hearts. Because we love them. We heart Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Such an end the soundtrack. And you have a, a natural heart for a Star-Lord. Yes. And I have, I have seen parts of Star-Lord. You've seen many Star-Lord? Yeah. I've, he's not a mini Star Lord, that's for sure. You see, you see many Star Lords lightsaber. Yeah. These conversations make me uncomfortable. I don't want to talk yes. about this anymore. Let's, let's keep going. There's, well, you know, I also seen parts of uh, Star Lord. This new giant monster trip. that was uh, teased in this brand new Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two concept art of uh, the movie. Yeah, what so, the fuck was that thing? I don't know. So if you haven't seen, know what we're talking about, and you haven't seen it, head over to our Facebook page. You can pause right now and just head over there. Um, it's this pretty awesome piece of artwork that appeared i think appeared in empire magazine uh i got it off of james gums he posted it on his facebook page and i shared that that's where i got it from but um basically it shows all the guardians fighting this giant like tentacle planetoid sized monster in space it looks awesome but i think more than anything what it does is it gives us a real good look at kind of what this movie is going to be like um one it's everybody in space without a, without a, without a ship fighting a giant monster. So it's very reminiscent yeah. of, you know. And, and not wearing spacesuits. Yeah, not wearing spacesuits. It kind of reminds me of 
you know, the old sea captains of, of old fighting yeah. giant squids and stuff like that. That's kind of what it looked like. Yeah. Um, and but, you know, at least they have like a protective thing over their face. No, they're just floating uh, around. Cause that's all that matters. <laughs> and the other thing we saw is that Baby Groot is in fact Baby Groot. So it looks like, looks like Little Groot yeah. is going to be Little Groot for this entire movie. Well, he he won't be potted. Yeah, he won't anymore. be potted. He'll be out of the pot. He's more like an adolescent kind of stuff. I think he's as big as raccoon. Yeah, what like like uh, rocket? So like a three-year-old Groot. He's three-year-old Baby Groot. Yeah. So, but, which but, looks awesome. But it looks yeah. awesome. Check it out. Um, I, that comes out next summer, so I'm sure we'll probably get a trailer here soon. I know they released one during Comic Con that we haven't seen yet, but uh, mm -hmm. from those who we know that have seen it, uh, they say it's awesome. Yes. I'm pretty sure it's awesome too. Uh, you know who isn't awesome? Vin Diesel. Well, he's kind of awesome sometimes, but yeah, I don't know if he, Disney he likes awesome. to like ruin things. He kinda. likes to go to his Facebook page and just say whatever the fuck he wants to say because yeah. it's been he, he does not care about non-disclosure agreements I'll tell you right now really. he doesn't care if the rock is sitting in atlanta and for an hour waiting for for vin diesel to show up in 110 degree weather he sure as hell doesn't give a crap about what marvel thinks yeah about him very. telling the whole world that guardians of the galaxy are in fact going to be in avengers affinity war yeah what uh, a jerk thank vin diesel um, I don't think any of us really. I don't think that's too big of a of a leap, <laughs> considering it's going to be in space. That's been well known. We all kind of assume that Guardians would be part of it, considering as of right now they're the only space heroes we have in the Marvel universe. So, not really a stretch of the imagination to mm -hmm. figure out that they were going to be. Yeah. But Vin Diesel has Thanos confirmed that. Thanos is so. supposed to be having more of a presence in the next couple of movies. So. Yep. Um, somebody else who might have a presence in the next few movies is Doctor Strange. Really? Yeah. Um, Apparently, one? some of the uh, the people on the set of Thor three released a little teaser of Thor Odinson in street garb in New York City with a little piece of paper at an address, looking for something. And uh, the Eagle Eye fan spotted the address, and it was in fact one seven seven A Bleecker Street. Which, to those of you who know your Marvel knowledge, that is the address of one. Doctor Strange. It is his sanctum sanctorum in the comic books. Uh -huh. so, uh, so I wonder if that's going to be like an end thing. So like... my guess, here's my guess. My speculation is, is the, it's rumored that Doctor Strange is going to have the time stone, which is one of the le uh, remaining stones that we haven't seen yet in the universe. Oh, okay. And so it's, my guess is, is that Thor is going to be trying to figure out what the rest of these stones are because he knows that maybe Thanos is coming. He's been in space. He hear, he knows about the, the gauntlet. So uh, I believe Thor Ragnarok is the Ragnarok is the last movie before or it's either I think it's right before Infinity uh, Adventures Infinity War. So this could be your last second tie into building for Avengers movie. But okay. that's my guess. So I'm guessing he's going to go talk to him about that. Also revealed in the uh, in some of these set pictures was a little bit of a spoiler. I don't think it's much of a spoiler, but if you don't want to know about it, uh, turn away in three, two, one. Anthony Hop Sir Anthony Hopkins has been spotted on set for Thor three. So Odin will or it's just Tom Hiddleston and very impressive. No, arm. no, it was Hannibal Lecter. He was on set. Man, Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, he was eating some uh, some brains with a nice Chianti. Hey, I have a quick question. Yeah. Does the time stone let you, like, travel through time or something? I'm not, you know, it's been a while since I've read it. I believe the time stone affects all space and time. So I think you can bend time, you can travel in through time, I think you can... <laughs> so could that just be how Doctor Strange, like, does his portal stuff? Um, it's portal, it can also be how, when you watch it, how they're bending. Um, I've also heard... Rumors that he's going to be able to bend to go like jump dimensions and shift dimensions and a lot of people are speculating that if um, They're setting this up in case Marvel and Fox ever do broker a deal. That's how they could bring the X-Men into this universe Dr. Strange uh. can shift universes, so you don't necessarily have to Explain why we've never seen X-Men before if you bring them in Yeah, and then but too bad Marvel's already killing off every mutant in the comic books so. Let's be honest <laughs> the only person we want to jump over to Marvel right now is Deadpool yeah, Deadpool and 
Hugh Jackman said he's not doing any more Wolverine. So. I, I I feel like if Hugh Jackman, if they said, listen, we want Wolverine, we've got permission to use your your character, your Wolverine in the next Avengers movie, I think he'd do it. But I think that's about yeah. it. But then he'll be like, money. Oh, I'm sure Marvel would go money. like we will to Disney. Yeah, essentially. So I don't know. We'll see. But that's pretty much all we know about that. Not a lot of like you know crazy information, but it's yeah. cool. Apparently, there's like a Spider-Man and Thor um, uh, fake trailer scene thing out right now, so don't get tricked by that. Yeah, I don't believe the interwebs. Uh, one thing I do believe is the Russos have come out and uh, and said that Captain America, Steve Rogers, will not be Captain America in the next Avengers movie. That right now, as of the end of Civil War, he is no it's longer Captain America. Steve Rogers, the man. Steve, who cares? He's a badass. Yeah, that's you true. You seen that movie? Happen. He's a total anyway. badass. But uh, you know, someone we don't know who's gonna if they're gonna be a badass or not is uh, the new Iron Woman in the Marvel comic book universe. Re Re Williams is going to become a taking over for Tony Stark. We talked about that at length a few episodes yeah. ago, but we did not. We speculated that her name would not be Iron Man because that makes no sense whatsoever. Well, the comic is still called The Invincible Iron Man Number One. Starring Riri but her name Riri is not Williams Iron Man. as so, but you know, Marvel can't sell a comic book that says I was, throwing, not I, was, Iron Man. I was throwing it to you. So yeah, the new uh, Invincible Iron Man is gonna be starring <laughs> Riri Williams as Iron Heart. Yes, her name is Iron Heart. Yay. Isn't it that like, isn't that a fan? Isn't that a or, Van Damme movie from the 90s? Oh, no, wait, that was Lionheart. Or of Lionheart. Oh, man. It'd be even sweeter if her name was Lionheart. I know. Lion Ironheart. Iron, uh, Iron Lionheart. Stupid. I don't know. I am I am it, anxious to pack the first issue and check out They can't call her the, the Invincible Ironheart number one, you know, issue. They have to make Invincible Iron Man because Iron Man's the only thing that's going to make itself. Well, the one thing I do like that I think is cool is that she has her own distinguished name. So if she, if this character, if people resonate with Riri, um, they could easily transition her to her own comic book when they inevitably bring Tony Stark back. So, you know, and that, and yeah. that's Avenue. I think it's pretty cool. That's that's what Marvel wants. Well, ultimately, no. that is what they want. Tony Stark's not going. I do think it's hilarious when everyone gets so angry because, mm. like, all the haters. Oh, you know, it's funny. Yeah. Last week we talked about the fact that. You know that um, oh god, I'm gonna t I don't remember her name, but the the girl who could possibly be Mary Jane Watson in the new uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming, how she wasn't a white girl with red hair, how she was a darker girl with with brown hair, and me and you just thought we were like, well, I guess all the redheads will be mad because she's like the only redhead in the Marvel universe. Apparently, everybody on the internet took that in a totally different direction, and those people yeah. are stupid. We officially, for the record, don't give a shit if Mary Jane Watson is uh, is, is half black. Don't really care. Mm -hmm. We just thought it was a strange choice because she's yeah. always been a redhead. Is she in the comic book. actress? Yeah. As long as uh, she nails the comic book character, as long as she nails Mary Jane Watson, that's awesome, and I think she'd be fine. Like we said, we just thought it was a strange choice off just first glance because Mary Jane has always been such a uh, iconic redheaded, you know, character. But whatever, who cares? But the internet could be in jackasses. Oh, yeah, fuck you, internet. Internet, don't be, don't be dumb. Anyway, oh. if you're excited about Riri and uh, Ironheart, yeah. that is on shelves, I think, soon. Yeah. That'll be well, coming soon. I'll pick better. it up. I'll check it out. Um, let's see here. Season 5 of Arrow is rapidly approaching, and the showrunners have said that this Smart season noise. will That's not have said. any magic this is This is what they're saying. <laughs> They have said that there will not be any magic magic happenings in Arrow, which is actually pretty fitting considering the magic in Arrow has ran out a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> that is too true, my friend. Yeah, Arrow Season 4 was terrible. But we have that to possibly give away at the end of the show if you really loved it a lot. And if or you never you... saw it, it's amazing. You should totally enter our contest. Or if you like torture porn, I mean... No, hey, you got we got John Constantine, and there's a few episodes that were pretty good. Just I don't know the overall, the last episode. There's parts of the the beginning of the season was pretty strong. The end was just. I think all the writers went on their own personal strike. They were like, we're just not writing anymore. 
Yeah. Whatever. Um, Amazon. Speaking of Amazon, which we weren't, but we have been all episode, basically. Yeah. They are developing a new show based on The Departed, the Martin Scorsese, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. <laughs> And movie of the same. He's probably watching all the Asian characters. But, but in the world. everybody, this TV show has a twist. And what is that twist, Ryan? What's the twist, Ryan? I'm. You don't remember twist, the twist? Yeah. Are you want to you me all to the, the information twist? before the show? Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll be no. All week long, you're like, I want to be part of the news more, Brian. All you do is talk, and I just sit here, and I just have to nod, and I feel like people aren't getting to know me well enough because I just sit here. And I just look pretty, so I would like some more information. And if you could throw me some of these things from time to time, so I could talk, that'd be awesome. And I was like, you know what, Ryan, you're you're right. You're a valuable part of the show, and I'm gonna give you some stuff to say. So I'm gonna start pitching you. I don't remember asking that once, but you know, um, you, I'll take it. So the the must have been on Saturday night in Chicago, and uh, instead of uh, he's gonna be going into an undercover in a Latino gang. So yeah. it's going to be El Departo. That was my show. line. You're supposed to throw it back to me. We talked about this. This was my line. Oh, that was your line? I was supposed to say, oh, you were going to say, you were going to say, the twist, Brian, is that and, he's, and the undercover police officer is in, is in Chicago, and he's going in a Lat undercover in a Latino gang. And I'm going to say, and you were supposed to be like, and then pause, long pause, look at me. And then I was going to say, so I wonder if they should call the show... El Departo, and then I was going to put on my awesome aviators, and we were going to play the Who in the background. Well, you know, if it's not an episode, if I don't, just kind of fuck something up, but at least... You know what you not. get? Ha! Chug splits! Uh, Punch! <laughs> right to the nuts. I dare you. Uh, that's pretty sensitive. Um, you know what else? She's got a sword. For it. She's not afraid to use it. Her, what, the lasso of truth? The lasso truth. There's only one truth here, Ryan. You're fucking our show up. That's the truth. Damn, you know, I'm sorry, You're very strong for these last couple parts of I, I can just... I'll just sit here and be pretty. Whatever. You know what? I'm going to blow through this. You've angered me, and I don't want to talk anymore. So here it comes, Ryan. Here it comes. Ben-Hur. Nobody watched it. It's going to lose a shit ton of money. It cost $100 million to make and millions more to market, and it made $22 million. Ben-Hur is out right Guess now? what? Unless it involves... Jesus Christ get nailed to a cross and beaten by the producers of Saw. Nobody wants to watch it. All right, quit yeah. making biblical movies. I will say that Noah was pretty good though with the uh, with the rock demons. That made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, it had it's magic. Major. Watch Noah. I think Noah was great. It has magic. It was like it's like if Lord of the Rings yeah. had a big giant arc. And and if the Old Testament was fucking fairies and magic. Oh, I guess it's in the. I don't. Know, I never read the Old Testament, so right, I wouldn't it wasn't know. In there. That was not. I'm pretty sure that I've read the Old Testament, and Noah was not in that whole part of Noah was not in there. Uh, there Justice there League Dark, in the Old something that I am very excited, and also was in is in Genesis. If you uh, read the Old Testament, you can find Justice League Dark in there. Yeah, has a new director, and it's finally moving forward yet again at Warner Brothers. Doug Lehman, who most recently directed Edge of Tomorrow, and was scheduled to direct Gambit, so I guess Gambit's not going to happen. Again. Once again. Chan and Tatum. He's going to make Magic Mike 7, 8, and 9 before Gamma comes out. <laughs> um, so anyway, he's on board uh, He's on board for Justice League Dark, and they're fast-tracking fast it. For those who are not familiar with Justice League Dark, it's basically uh, all the magical, dark magical characters of, uh, of DC Universe. John Constantine, Zantana, Swamp Thing, Dead Man. It's a great comic book series, and I think it could be a really good movie, so very excited for that. Angry Birds 2 is coming. Whatever. Did we need it? My, Probably not. I haven't watched the first one yet. My kids seem to like it a lot, so we're good. <laughs> it's um, like the Angry Birds games. You you can play the first one, but do you really need like all the other seven different versions? Ryan, we're Americans. Have? How many things do we actually need that we get? Yeah. You you got me there. All right. And finally, something that we do need and we do gotta goddamn get. Is season seven of Game of Thrones apparently is fucking awesome? Duh. Oh, you know who's confirming that? Arya it's... Stark herself. Maisie Williams has said she they did the table read for season seven, and uh, she said well I don't know if it's table read maybe she just got her own scripts I don't know all I know is that she said after reading it that we are not prepared for what's going to happen in season seven. No, she said shit gets real. 
Hang on. I have the quote. Nothing okay. will prepare you for season seven of Game of Thrones. Shit gets real. Yes. So do not. And then the last one was holy balls. Holy balls. Like that. So <laughs> shit gets real. Mine's gonna fucking be blown in holy balls. Okay, Damn you, many, HBO. See, how many people wait. does she have less on her list? She has Cersei. So she technically still has the Hound, right? But is she gonna go after the Hound? No, she. I thought she killed him. Or she thinks that she killed him. Well, yeah, but once she finds out he's not dead. Oh yeah, she's totally gonna go after him. Yeah, I. So is she gonna kill Cersei? I still think Jamie Lannister is gonna kill Cersei. Yeah, I think that one's gonna be way too hard. And like the phrase was probably easy because they're just they're fucking idiots. Oh, like what? when Jamie's like, "What the fuck are you guys doing?" When they're trying to siege that place. Before we go down into a 20-minute Game of Thrones nerd talk, <laughs> I would like to say that uh, Drago himself, Ooh. Aquaman, Jason Momoa, has been teasing that he is in Ireland right now with the cast of Game of Thrones and the producers. He all these pictures, yeah, drinking with them. He says it's good to be home. Hashtag Drago lives and all this other stuff. So, no. Is Drago how, gonna come back as a White Walker? How can he come back if he burned his body? Shut Maybe up. like a flash. Yeah, most people speculate that if he is back, it's probably for some flashback scenes or yeah, some but visions they, or something. A lot of people thought that Jon Snow was gonna be a flashback. Well, Jon Snow burnt. wasn't. Yeah, like to your point, wasn't burnt dead for yeah, a true. long time. I don't know. Who cares? He's awesome. I Who hope cares? he's back. It'll be cool. I hope he just is back, and then I'll explain why. Season seven opens and he's hanging out. With, he's hanging out with Daenerys. Or it's like, hey, rooms really want to fuck with people. So can you just come up here? We'll pay for everything for a week. You just come up here and pretend like you're doing shit. You know what? That's totally what they should do. After everybody, people. they got the Watchers on the wall tweeting out every appearance. Every, they ruined the kind of. They basically ruined the Jon Snow revival by showing a picture of Jon Snow in you know Jon Snow gear. They mm. should bring back Ned Stark. They should bring back. Rob Stark. Yeah. They should bring back everyone who's died and just have them hang out on set all the time in full yeah. costume. Yeah, yeah, they have to be in full costume. Occasionally yeah. having them taking place in a scene just to screw with people. <laughs> you know what, Game of Thrones? That one's free. You guys can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Was it? we're gonna we're gonna package that. Yeah. And send it right to HBO. All me, Ryan, asks is that you make us extras in one. One episode. That's it. Yeah. Zombies. We will. We will be people that just like just get the shit sliced out of them. That's fine. You know. I don't want to be. Uh, oh man. I don't want to be one of the phrase though. I don't want to yeah. be one of their guys. We gotta be one of the other extras. I I even let Sam Tarly kill me. I mean. Yeah, I would do that too. Anyway, well, that's all the news we got. We want to talk about some trailers. So I was thinking we haven't done it in a while. We're running a little long here. I know we got some fun stuff to talk about next. Uh, do you want to do quick word association with the five trailers that uh, we're going to talk about? I, I'm, I'm all down for that. All right. So, first trailer. We finally saw, we teased it last week, but we finally saw Batman Return of the Cape Crusader, the animated movie starring Adam West and uh, Burt Ward. It's what we need. Yes. I want to mention one scene from this, and if you have not watched it, go watch it. There's a part... Yes. When Robin wants to chase, I think, Penguin across the street, yeah, okay. and Batman stops him and says, No, Robin, jaywalking is highly dangerous. And he says, Quick, to the crosswalk. And they both run to the and crosswalk. And the cross the you know what? What Ryan said, this is what we need right now. This is what the world yeah. needs. They need the healing There's, touch. Yeah. There's so much serious shit going on everywhere, and like every movie is just fucking serious as hell. Yeah. Oh, it just looks so good. What the world needs now is I, it's 66 Batman. <laughs> yeah, if it does not put a smile on your face, then you just have no soul. Yeah. Honestly. So check out the trailer. Let us know what you think. Uh, second trailer, Ryan. Trailer number two. Rings. The follow-up to The Ring 1 and The Ring 2. No. I'm going to say... I'm gonna say no. Scary as shit. It looks just as scary as the first rings. I'm gonna go see it. So it's the trailers. I didn't. I think it shows seven days. Like what happens over seven days or something. Yeah. Day one. I day made, two. I made it to day two. 
Before. You mentioned day three when she pulls out the hairball. Yeah, days, yeah, when she pulls the hairball, I now is when I was like, no, 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 and I had to like turn it off. I could not watch anything after that. Well, was, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a small child, Ryan. I watch the whole thing because I'm a man. I'm almost. Yeah, uh, I will. I do not like scary movies at all. Yeah, I like really. a bit thriller. I don't Man. like scary movies. I like a few scary movies, and I enjoyed The Ring. So, and The Ring too. So, I'm gonna watch Rings. My wife will drag me. She keeps. My wife is being a jerk lately, and she knows I hate scary movies. So she keeps tagging me in all the trailers, the scary movie trailers that are coming out because it's getting closer to you know Halloween and that time of the year. Yeah. All right, next trailer. Max Steel, the, uh, the I think Hasbro or Mattel movie based on the cartoon and toy line of Max Steel. Yes. Wish I could have seen it. Oh, cause did it get pulled? It's blocked on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's pulled on YouTube. <laughs> well, I want to say it was the international, the Japanese trailer, and it was leaked. My guess is is that it looked fucking terrible. So they were like, whoa, 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 we didn't want this trailer leaked. Pull it. <laughs> Abort. Yeah, Abort. They, it looked they bad. Aborted a shit out of that. I don't thing. know if you guys ever saw the movie The Giver a long time ago. It had Mark Hamill in it. It was based on a Japanese uh, property. The movie was okay, kind of. It looked worse than that, so I don't know. Wow. Check it out. Max Steel. See if you can find it. Maybe you can find a copy that's not been blocked. I feel like Ryan didn't try too hard. Uh, trailer number four? I think it was four. I lost count. Uh, HBO's Westworld. New trailer. Naked butts. Naked robot butts. Ryan did not has not seen the brand new trailer, so I will not make him I suffer. Just I will not make him sit there and think of something to say. I yeah. saw it and it looks goddamn amazing. I'm not gonna say it's gonna fill the hole. It's gonna be left by Game of Thrones in a couple of years, but it looks like it. It has that. It looks like it has that pedigree where it could be a show that you could be the next. They could have their next Game of Thrones on their hands. It looks. Crazy. Yeah. I, I think it will be, I think it has the potential to be a really big hit, but I, I don't think there's really anything, honestly, that can capture what Game of Thrones has been able to No, capture. probably not, but in the world we live in, everyone's looking for the next something, so my guess is this is HBO's best chance at getting a huge show. Personally, I think yeah. American Gods over at Stars might be one of the next big hits. Oh, but, uh, yes. But yeah, if you haven't checked out the Westworld uh, trailer, if you don't know what it's about, basically... Think Disneyland, but with robots, and you can be in a western, and you can do whatever you want to. You can have yeah. giant Shoot orgies up. with these robots if you want to, or you can kill them, yeah. or you could, you know, you can do anything you want to. And it looks like the park is going a little crazy. So I guess maybe more think of Jurassic War Park, but with instead of dinosaurs, you have robots. <laughs> yes, and westerns. Yeah, and westerns, but it looks crazy. If you don't have HBO, yeah. I don't know what you're doing with your life, but I think it's a book. Hmm? I think I'm trying to it's remember. A, well, I know it's a book. I think it was also, there was a movie, too, back in the 70s they did. Okay, okay. Um, right. And lastly, the last trailer we have for you is, you. most of you probably have not even heard of this. It's a Russian movie that just released a trailer. The Russian, yeah. the Russian, I don't know, this Russian it's movie studio decided to make their own never, version of the Avengers. And it's called yeah. The Guardians. Yes, it's never going to make it probably anywhere outside of... I don't know. It's going to make it to my house because I want to see it immediately. Yeah. It has a man bear. Yeah, it's definitely a crap With a mini gun. I think it's way crap or crap faster. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely be reviewing this for crap or crap, crap tastic. Um, basically, don't know much about it. It's horribly dubbed in English. It has... It has... I almost think I'd rather watch it in Russian with the subtitles in English because the yeah, English dubbing true. is so bad. Yeah. Well, it's, you gotta give them credit, though, because they're actually making a movie that, unless there's some Russian comic book that it's based off of... It's kind of making their well, own thing? This, yeah, this it's got... It um, be, like, a fairly original property. Yeah, should, these are all Cold War experiments. Fun. One person can control, like, rocks and stuff, and stuff. One guy, I think, can control either time or he's really fast because he everything goes slow when he cuts kills people. He's like a ninja. Yeah. Um, there's a girl who basically guy with looks... the giant, like, curved scimitars? Oh, dude. And just murders people. There's a girl yeah. who can turn invisible and control electricity. And there's a man, a dude who turns into a bear man. Giant bear man. Like and he has a, a machine, six, uh, he like has a, a minigun, like Predator. Yeah, like a seven-foot bear guy. And considering this is a studio that none of us have ever heard for, the from, the special effects aren't that bad. 
Yeah, like some of like the guns and stuff when they're shooting and like the tanks and everything. It looked kind of. I, it, it, Dude, Putin blew his entire military budget on this movie. I'll tell you that because it looks like they oh, got real helicopters yeah. and tanks. But at the very end, a giant bear dude chucks the guy and like throws him through the air, and then he whips out his fucking Gatling gun and just shoots him. Shoot the dude in the air. And then I watched I watched a um, reaction video of this Russian guy. So. But he's well, like, he can't understand that's right. anything he's saying, so I just like fast forward it all the way to the end because I wanted to see what he did for the bear guy. He's like, oh, and he's like, just like screaming a bunch of shit in Russian. I'm calling um, it right now. We will have a Guardians yeah. remake in America within the mm -hmm. next five years. Yeah. There's somebody over at probably Fox or someplace going, we've yeah. got to get that right now. Yeah, because we have no original ideas. <laughs> yeah. And one day we're gonna lose. We're gonna lose the X Men. <laughs> Maybe Sony would be smart. I don't know. Somebody should do yeah, this. Yeah, we're going to lose the X-Men. We've so got to get the Russian X-Men immediately. <laughs> we need the yeah, Russian almost, Avengers. Yeah. That's what they should call the movie. The Russian yeah. Avengers. we got to stop going to the North Korean movie industry because their shit just sucks. <laughs> they keep hacking us. All right. Well, that's all we got. Thanks for joining us for Ninja News. <laughs> Pure pee. Huh. All right, can we talk about the shit that I've been waiting for? I know. Let's I talk about, all right, what do you want to do? Let's yesterday. get. You want to do the tick first, or you want to do? Let's do the tick. Let's, let's do, tick out of the way. Yeah, let's do the tick first. So, right. so right. well, let's start Amazon, over again in case I want to chop know. this up into its own segment. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. So this week, me and Ryan got the glorious opportunity to review two move, well, two shows from Amazon Pilots. All right, let me start that again. Hey, everybody! <laughs> Behind the scene magic, people. Uh, me and Ryan this week got to review two pretty awesome new shows from Amazon. Um, right now they're in their pilot season and two of the shows they have out. We didn't get to the third yeah. one. We did the first two. Yes. We decided to watch and let you guys know if you should be watching these. So the first one we watched was a remake, up to date version, I don't know, of The Tick. Yes. It is, it's not Patrick Warburton, if anyone's. If you're familiar with that version of the take, does I would probably say that yeah, his voice is just so goddamn iconic. I mean, it's, yeah, it's hard to beat. But I, with this, what was the actor's name? I forgot to write it down on my notes. Um, but this take is actually pretty funny, and it's definitely uh, a little bit different than the 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 last take that we had. Not the animated one, but the live action. Um, Right. I mean, it's, he's definitely very confident. Okay, this guy's name is Peter Sarah Finnewitz, six. What Basically, most recently he was in Guardians of the Galaxy. He was one of the Nova Corp guys who died at the end. He was kind of, uh, uh, I don't know. He's good. I like him. Yeah. So he's not Patrick. <laughs> he's not Patrick Warburton, but uh, he does a great job. And, uh, you know, he, he beats up a you know, a bunch of dudes and they're shooting at him and just laughing and like, you need to stop your evil ways. And, yeah, he you know. definitely captured the voice, like the, the attitude of the tick. Like he talks about yeah. destiny. He's like, today we hear, we shall embrace the sweet call of destiny. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's classic tick. His costume looks good. It's a little bit muted. It's not the bright blue that the, uh, yeah. the last tick TV show was. Um, the series is much more, I never read the comic book, so I'm not gonna say it's more in line with the comic book. But this show is definitely darker and more violent. It's it's yeah. It's a hard PG-13 kind of retelling of the Tick. So this is a, I don't know if I'd let my younger kids watch it. It's pretty violent. There's some parts that are fairly. Um, they yeah. have like the terror the, when yeah, he blinds people with kinda... syphilis and then guns them down in the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, I don't know. He, he, he like steals the kid's ice cream, and just fucking like start chugging on it, and <laughs> throws it down. Throws it well, down. and then the one one of the heroes, they blind him, and they're like, "No, he's like, don't kill him. Crush his hands instead." And they're like crushing his hands to pulp. Yeah, this show is very. Well, they violent. blinded him with weaponized syphilis. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, is uh, is that Har uh, Haley Joel? Not Haley Joel Osment. Uh, God, Rorschach, guy who played Rorschach in The Watchmen. Oh, is he? That I want to say he plays, terror? yeah, Jackie Earl Haley. That's uh, who plays the terror. Oh, okay. I thought so it's, familiar. this show's got a good cast. We won't spend too much time on it. Basically, if you've ever watched yeah. The Tick, or even if you haven't, the premise is pretty simple. Superheroes have come to the world, and they're here. Yeah. 
And, yeah, and, and the costumes don't look terrible. I mean, they, they look like kind of car... They don't look cartoony. They, they look like a little out of place, but practical enough to where it, it kind of makes sense, in a way. Well, yeah, it, they look good. They don't look... They look it definitely is... I'm going to say they, they made it so it's a realistic version of the tick. Yeah, that's true. Um, Especially with Arthur's costume. And, and not... So that's anybody who's not familiar with Amazon, how Amazon does their pilots, basically what they do is they take... They, they let everyone shoot a pilot like any other TV show, but they... But most TV shows, most uh, like NBC, Fox, they, they view it, their executives view the pilot, and then they make a decision whether they want a full series or not. What Amazon does is they put the pilots out on Amazon online. You watch them and then you review, you rank them, you review them, you vote them yes or no. The shows that yeah. get the most votes or whatever the requirement is are the ones that go to series. So yes. this is definitely something that all of us can really, you know, put our two cents on. And if we really like it, we can make sure this this gets pushed forward. So the tick is 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 a pilot. It's not. There's not a ton of information. It's only a half hour long. So. It definitely leaves you wanting more, and after the first half hour, you kind of want to see this world develop. It does a pretty good job of building the world, but basically, the story in the, in the pilot is there's a kid. Well, there's there's a kid who believes that the terror isn't dead, and, and right now in the world, everyone believes the terror is dead. He doesn't think so. He thinks the terror is still operating, and so he's trying to prove because the tick because the terror killed his family that mm. um, that we'll killed, his dad. killed his dad that he, that it's still operating. Um, and that's kind of the whole premise of this, and he ends up running to the tick, and, you know, he ends up becoming, uh, what is it, Mothman? Is that his sidekick? Yeah, I can't remember. Where, yeah, I think it's Mothman. So, anybody familiar with the property, this isn't, like, spoiler stuff. You, you kind of know this is coming all the way, and it, yeah. it's all introduced in the first episode, so it's not. But it definitely leaves a little bit on a cliffhanger. Um, it's not as fully functioning as a show. Well, it's not a complete story like yeah. the next pilot. Well, they kind of about. make it seem like the tick is, like, a part of his like alter personality or something uh you know like it's like essentially the arthur created the tick yeah. i don't know if they're trying to make it seem like that or well he seems to know him and and so i'm trying to remember yeah. i'm trying to remember my tick lore because i want yeah, to say me, that that was confusing for me because i couldn't i i it's thought the tick was a totally separate person but they made it seem like well it's been a long time but i i want to say and i could be completely wrong but I want to say that the Tick actually, like, he lived with him when he was younger, and somehow he turned into a, a superhero later, and that's why he knows him and likes him and has been following him around. So, okay. But I could be completely wrong. That might have been, I might have read something else in a different comic yeah. book. Might have got my superhero origins mixed. I, I liked Tick as a kid. I'm not a giant Tick fan. I was excited to hear that it was coming back because I did like the animated show and the TV version, the short-lived TV version. But, um, but all in all, I don't know. I like I liked the, I liked the Amazon pilot. I would like to see a yeah. full season of this because I think there's enough there that you could have a really interesting, you know, 10, 13 episode season. I think it'd be fun. A different yeah. take on superheroes. Yeah. And it seems, you know, it had a good comedic element where it needed to be. And, and but, you know, some of it was also visual. You know, it's like where the Arthur's talking to his sister and she's a EMT and yeah. she's got blood like all over her. So, yeah, it was a well shot pilot. Like, I, I really enjoyed the pilot. I thought it was a good yeah. solid start to a show. Um, it's it's kind of an offbeat comedy. Yeah, I would say it's a dark comedy. Yeah, offbeat dark comedy. I'm not gonna say it's like a critique of superheroes. It's not like The Watchmen. It's not a breakdown of superheroes. But yeah, it's, yeah. to Ryan's point, it's, I think it's a dark, say PG-13, you know, comedic satire of of superheroes. But I did enjoy it. I thought it was good, and I I do I do want to see more. So I'm gonna say watch The Tick on Amazon, and at least if nothing else, give it a watch. I think I think it's just Amazon.com slash um, pilots, pilot shows or something like yeah, that. And you, can, and you can vote and everything. If so. you watch it, you can. If you watch it, they give you all the information at the beginning and the end of where to go vote for it. So I will be voting yes for the tick. Hopefully, I, I do. I would like yeah. to see it get picked up, and I, I would like to see where it goes. It intri interest me interested me enough that I would like to see more of it. So yeah, I'm gonna be voting for it too. I mean, right. it, it, it looked fun. Yeah, it was fun. Definitely I worth, won. definitely worth a half hour watch. Um, what? No. So the no, next no, show no. we're going to talk about is I threw this to Ryan because I'd heard about it. And I was like, hey, if, if we're going to, you know, we, I think last week we said we were going to review the tick. So I was like, if we're going to review, let's make a whole segment of some Amazon, uh, Amazon pilots. And I was like, 
You should watch this one too. I've heard the good things about it. It's called Jean Claude Van Johnson, and it's starring Jean Claude Van Damme. And I watched it last night, and holy fucking shit, it might be my new favorite show. It's it's everything you want in someone parodying themselves, and parodying themselves to like such an extreme that you probably almost believe that Jean Claude Van Damme's house has a JV. The, okay, well, you know, here, real quick, before, before, we talk, before we talk about the show, like, the, the why we liked it, basically, here's the premise of the show. And tell me you're not going to crack a smile when I tell you the premise of the show. So yeah. it starts out with Jean-Claude Van Damme is completely retired from movies, which we pretty much already have known because yes. he's been retired. You know, he hasn't really done much lately. Um, but he's been retired, and he's kind of just, you know, he's kind of bored in life. He's tired of banging, you know, yeah. uh, hot shit. girls and... He goes, he's on a Segway. He gets his, he gets his newspaper by getting on a Segway, going down his driveway and using like garbage collectors to pick it up (laughs) off the ground. He only (laughs) bathes in coconut water. (laughs) And no, he has his, all his his water, his whole water system. Only, only, only shoots out coconut water. I took a shower and I'm still sticky. And he's like, well, cause there's coconut water. Like just in your shower, it's like. No, and I, I laugh so hard. <laughs> just his accent, the way he says he's like the coconut water. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and then it plays like a bunch of music in French because a bunch of sad go. music, and all, all throughout his house is yeah. just decorated with because he's you know well known known dog and animal lover. All these pictures of dogs yeah. and animals, and then all these posters of all his movies. Like the whole yeah. his whole house is like a shrine to him. So yeah, then one day he's he out gets eating. And he's got a giant pantry full of pop tarts. Yeah. Because the only he's a Then he tarts. microwaves. I, he, he's, he's, and then one day he's out at this restaurant. The like dry, it's called like dry ramen. It's one of these new pop up restaurants where they give no, you a dry it's a top pop, ramen. No, he said it's not a pop up restaurant. It's a pop up experience. Oh yeah, it's a pop up experience. <laughs> and 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 the guy thinks he's, or was it, he thinks he's, he recognizes him, and he's like, yeah, he's like, I thought you were retired. He's like, no, I'm not retired. He's like. Or no, I am retired. He goes, oh, like, you're not doing anything on, like, home video or director release? He goes, no, I'm I'm real retired, not Nicolas Cage retired. (laughs) Anyway, this guy goes, oh, I thought you were Nicolas Cage. So people are mistaking him for other people, and he's just kind of hit rock bottom. Then he runs into a girl, an ex-girlfriend, and she blows him off. And so he's, so he calls up his agent, and he's just like, okay, I'm back in. And she's like, yes, you're my favorite, you know, you're my favorite client. Come back in. Mm -hmm. And so he... The next scene, he's sitting in front of his his agent. She's reading him all these terrible scripts for movies, like yeah. where he's like the side reimagining of Pinocchio with an action twist. Yeah, everything is a reimagining with an action twist. But he's always playing the sidekick to Channing Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> and Channing Tatum would be like, and and you're gonna be a dog chained up to Channing Tatum or some. I can't yeah. remember what it was. And but... then and then he goes, no no no, I want you know I'm, I want the other thing. So you find out that. His name isn't really Jean Claude Van Damme. That that's actually a cover. He's really Jean Claude Van Johnson, a hitman <laughs> for whatever who, organization who uses, this is. Who uses his shitty movies as a? And so his whole career, a, he did these movies just as a cover to go on hit the hit missions. <laughs> and he walks okay, back so, in because his girlfriend is also a hitman. And like Belarus or, or yeah, Bel- she's like his, uh, his like handler or whatever. And so, in the movie that he he goes back when he gets back into it, and he and he does like a workout montage. <laughs> That's just <laughs> terrible. Because he's out of shape and he works out for like one day. He tries to day. kick his bag and falls down. He goes. The movie he does, he settles on is called Huck. It's a reimagining <laughs> of Huck, where Huck he's Huck, he's and then Huck. Uh, and then Tom Sawyer is this hot blonde <laughs> that he's in a relationship. I tell you, you know what? I don't want to spoil anymore. It, yeah. The movie is is absolutely is, hysterical. The TV show is absolutely hysterical. Door. It is one of the funniest it's, half hours. There's so many good yeah. jokes that they set up and then pay off at the end of this. Oh. They have a whole time cop thing that they pay off. It's uh, brilliant. They have this whole yeah. like making fun of how Jean Claude only fights like one on one and does it. it, it yeah, yeah, and he does kick flicks. <laughs> it's it is so yeah. funny. But I think what makes this funny is so the writing is really strong. Um, like I said, they introduce yeah. a lot of jokes early on that they pay off later in the episode, and, he, and, and John Claude himself buys it so much, bro. because he parodies himself, but he, but he, 
but it's almost like whoever wrote this loves loves Jean Claude Van Damme as an actor and as and as an action star <laughs> because there's so much love. A lot of times when people do parodies, it's almost like you almost feel awkward for them because it's you kind of yeah. feel bad because they're kind of making fun of themselves and it feels just kind of weird. This yeah. is almost like a, a love letter to Jean Claude Van Damme, but at the same time making fun of him completely. <laughs> Yes, and it was like a scene where he's he's going undercover, and he's pretending to be like this guy with a beard, and he and he accidentally like looks like a doppelganger for the guy. He runs into a guy that looks and, exactly like him. Yeah, and he tries to trick him. He's like, "I'm you from the future," and then but then because, he touches his arm, and he's like, "You can't do like, because well, like like from Time Cop." No, he goes, "You can't the same touch space me can't occupy, time yeah. If you touch them, the person, he's like, "Oh no, this is like Looper," or you know. <laughs> He's, He's like, like, well, if you're really me from the future, which movie's better, Time Cop or Looper? And, and then, like, John claude he has, like, that moment of hesitation where he's like, he wants to say Time Cop. But he says Looper? <laughs> and he's like, no, Time Cop is way better than Looper. And he's like, <laughs> and John claude goes, I like your taste in movies. <laughs> and it snaps his neck. It's it's so, I'm neck. telling you, this whole thing is like that. And I feel like... I feel like there's so much to go with this show. Like, every episode, you could kind of parody, like, a, a Jean-Claude movie, uh, like Bloodsport uh, or Lionheart. Okay. Or... I'm, I'm, I am going to... I want that movie made just so they can do Bloodsport 1. <laughs> and right. if and Amazon, just please, if you're listening, if you don't give us a full season, at least give us a movie. One single movie. Yeah. I want this movie. I want this season. I want, I want this so bad in my life. It is so funny. I, it has a great, it was entertaining. It actually, for a th it's also 30 minutes. For 30 minutes, mm -hmm. it had a, a, a first act, a middle act, a third act. It wrapped up a lot of stuff. And, and it set up the world so he could go forward. He mm -hmm. could have villain. I mean, it, there's so much they did in this first episode that I, I this has got it, to go to San It's been a long time since a half hour show had me smiling and like giggling to myself. Oh my, so I had, much. I had to pause it and I was watching on my iPad. I had to stop because I was laughing so hard I couldn't hear what was going on. It was so funny. <laughs> it is so funny. I, you know what? If you don't like Jean Claude Van Damme and you don't like any of his movies, this is probably not. You may not get a lot of the jokes, so this may not be the show for you. But yeah. if you ever have watched a Jean Claude Van Damme that you movie you enjoyed and you like a good kind of like a smart like an airplane style almost parody of something. Mm -hmm. This uh, is one of the very self-aware. Very self-aware. This yeah. is one of the smartest parodies I've ever seen, um, mm -hmm. and it's they do a great. Jo it is it is so good. It is so much fun. I and the payoff is so good. I didn't realize yes. when when he finally. I don't want to ruin too much, but when he finally gets back his mojo to an extent, yeah. you know, you're really, you are invested in this character. You're kind of like yeah, and it's got great action sequences too. <laughs> I know, and like the whole where. There's all the guards. Dude, <laughs> no, he looks like he's like got. He, he still looks like he's got it, man. He was throwing yeah, kicks he, out there, and he was still looking pretty, like his face is still very like. Yeah, I mean he looks older, looks but yeah. I, anyway, old. I mean his eyes are kind of fucked up, but <laughs> you can tell he's old. But it's I don't care. Yeah. Jean Claude Van Johnson for me is an absolute must watch. It's not even a yeah. take a gander. You need to in this episode get on your. Amazon Prime account and watch Jean Claude Van Johnson right now. Yes, immediately. Yeah, it is required before you watch your next episode of Geek Dad Report. We will not be your friend. We will ban you from the Faithful Fifty if you do not watch Jean Claude yes. Van Johnson. It is, I highly recommend it. That's I, I give him, I give it ten yeah. out of ten. <laughs> and if you're one of my friends and you don't have an Amazon Prime account, send me a text message and uh, I'll let you borrow my. Account, you can get it for free for like a month and then they hit you up so make yeah. sure you cancel it after that but watch yeah, it make sure you cancel no just um watch it we are going to definitely be going to amazon pilots and yeah. hitting like and i'm gonna get on my wife's account and hit like too so i get two votes <laughs> oh nice but yeah i don't know watch the show let us know what you think we loved it we absolutely loved it and yes. we think you will too so check it out john claude van johnson um i would definitely say this is a tv ma so this is a rated r type half hour show don't watch it with your yeah. kiddos it has violence yes. nudity lots of bad language and there is a third show on the amazon um, pilot season right now called i love dick um i i've heard that i kind of half watched the trailer it's got kevin bacon and um that redheaded chick from clueless 
She's I, in um, I thought she died. Really? Must be a different redhead check from Clueless. Uh, I don't know. We will. Uh, I did not know that one was out. I will try. We'll try and watch that one and give you guys a review of that one. But I have not heard of it. So it looked like it was more serious. Who cares? Uh, John Claude Van Johnson. John Claude Van Johnson and the Tick. And the Tick. And the Departed. Well, that's not out yet. There's no pilot for it. So anyway, yeah, there's no pilot right. for it. That's just got straight up bot. Well, that is all we got for you on that. Yes. All right. So final segments. Recommendations, what you should or should not be wasting your time doing this week, Ryan. Would you like well, to go first? Uh, I think that uh, everyone should go check out Legends of Tomorrow. You can buy it right now on Blu-ray for forty-four ninety something. Uh, probably get it cheaper if you go to Amazon. It's probably on a discount right now. Um, the Blu-ray and uh, digital just came out this week. Uh, I... I liked The Legend of Tomorrow. I thought it was a good show. So I think you guys should check it out. And plus, we're doing a giveaway this week as well. So, yeah. And uh, I think we had a winner, didn't we? The, we did have a winner. Do you want to announce our winner of The Legend of Tomorrow? DC Legend of Tomorrow? Blu-ray giveaway? It was... Drumroll. Drumroll. It was Chris. <laughs> It was not the evil Chris. Evil Chris did not enter. It was superhero Chris. It was superhero Chris. Chris Armenta, Faithful need. 50 member. Congratulations. You have Good won job, a digital copy of DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Please use it responsibly and use it wisely. Yes, we'll, we'll send it to you over Facebook. So uh, keep your messages, keep an eye Immediately. out. Immediately. Yes. And forthcoming. Uh, we have another giveaway, but we'll talk about that in a second after I do my recommendation. My recommendation yeah. this week is the Suicide Squad novelization. Look, it's a book, people. I know you guys thought I had the movie there for a second. You gotta read something? You gotta read something. Look at all them pages. And how many critics have panned it already? So, little backstory on this. I didn't even know this was out. I was uh, cruising around the interwebs like I do from time to time. And I heard a lot of people raving about the novelization of the Suicide Squad. So a lot of people know that Suicide Squad has gone through a many edits, and apparently the original version of David Ayer's movie is not what we saw. Um, like it or don't like it, I very much enjoyed it. I think the movie's not good, but I think it's very entertaining. That's been my stance from day one. But that being said, there was definitely a better movie in there somewhere, and it could have been a much you know, better put together story-wise movie. Um, so, sounds like the novel actually addresses that. This novel is based on David Ayer's original screenplay and not the edited, you know, the final cut that we got. So, apparently a lot of the Harley Quinn Joker scenes have been put back in this book. A lot of the characters have been much more fleshed out and the movie goes in a linear fashion instead of the, um, you know, show each person and give them their own little moment and then make them go on a mission that we got in the movie. So... Um, I've kind of, I haven't had a chance, I just got this in recently, I haven't had a chance to read the whole thing yet, so I cannot give you a solid review on it, but the little bit that I have read, it definitely fills in a lot more backstory on the characters, fleshes them out a lot more, and it's written by a comic book writer, um, let's see here where it is, what did I do, at the bottom here, oh, Marv Wolfman, who is a acclaimed comic book writer, so he knows these characters, and he puts his own little stamp on a lot of the, the characterizations, but from what I've read already, this might be the story that we're going to be angry we <laughs> we didn't angry get in the movie. Thing. So is it going to essentially be like the um, Batman v Superman Ultimate yeah. Edition? Yeah, it sounds like we're never going to get an Ultimate Edition of BV or of, uh, of Suicide Squad. So this may, like to Ryan's point, this may be your best chance to see the the actual vision of David Ayer and what Suicide Squad could have been. Could, uh, could have been. But I will give you guys a full kind of review once I actually read this all the way through. But yeah. so far, so good. It's only eight bucks. You get seven ninety five on Amazon. Comes a paperback for eight bucks. What do you got to lose? It's good reading. It's got good to read. Nothing. It makes your brain yeah. smart. Everything you gain. Suicide Squad. And they did not give me this. I bought this myself. Yes. All right. All right. Well, on that note, uh, we have one more thing for you guys before we get out of here. We have been. Uh, we first of all, we would like to give a, a shout out to Warner Brothers. You guys have been amazing. They've been giving us all kinds of things to give to you guys because they love you and us so much. So thank you guys for for continuing your I don't know, sponsorship of the Geek Dad Report. 
Yes, Home Bro Home Warner Brothers Home Entertainment is a, is a division of Warner Brothers that do, yeah, basically they're the ones that do all like the DVDs and Blu-rays and everything. Um, and obviously, you know, they work with the CW. And so we've done Supergirl, Legend of Tomorrow, and now we have Arrow Season 4. Season 4, which Blue you know what we said earlier. <laughs> This is a great so, season. And so we're going to do this one just like our other giveaways that we've done. We'll give you guys the digital code so you can have all the episodes uh, for Arrow Season 4 if you want to rewatch Damien Dark and all the shenanigans that happened during that. Uh, if you want to enter this one, we're going to do it on Facebook. And uh, what we're going to ask you to do, because in Season 5 of Arrow, um, they're going, he's building up his own team of vigilantes and, and everything because I guess he's mayor now, right? Yeah, Mayor Oliver Queen. He's getting, a, his yeah. whole team left him. He's getting a new team. Yeah, yeah, so he's building up a new team. We want you to tell us who are you going to be if you get chosen on Team Arrow. And you need to tag one of your friends. And give them a sidekick name. Yep. And I would highly suggest you make them really bad sidekick yeah. names. The more That's embarrassing awesome. and the funnier, get yeah. Get the more, more like inside joke that yeah. only maybe you two would know, but it just kind of confuses everyone else. But it looks kind of funny. Yeah, like if you're like it's Billy yeah. the Wine Cork Bottle guy. That's not funny to us. We don't get that. Yes. <laughs> Maybe Billy had a yes. wine cork up his butt, and it's hilarious to you guys, but we don't know that. Yeah. So, you know, if you make it Billy the wine cork up his butt guy, well, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yes. So we want you to tell us who you who are you going to be on the Oliver Queen's new uh, Arrow uh, Vigilante team protecting, shoot, not Central City. Star uh, City. Star City. What and, is your superhero uh, name? And what is your who name? is your sidekick and tie and, and tag your your friend who will be your sidekick? Yes, because you will be entered to win Arrow season four, the best yes. season of Arrow. Possibly, maybe. Yeah, sure. So it's definitely the free season of Arrow for you, for one yeah, lucky we'll, person. We will pick that. Uh, we'll pick out the winners next Thursday, um, right before we air the episode, and we'll announce it on uh, next week's episode number. Six. 69 actually Brian. actually side show note ryan is going to be gone next week so we are not going to have oh. an episode yes, 69 so we will we will we will put it together a post and we will form you guys on facebook maybe we'll yes. do a little live facebook video and uh, announce the winner we'll do something fun with it but we will not have a show next week guys so we are taking a week off for labor day we are both going to be out of town so yes, there's no i'm going to be a few states away on a job training so i can't do it anyway so it's it's I'm going to be in be space good. fighting evil aliens, so I will not be yes. here. Actually, and I'm going to be Brian, watching John claude uh, Van Johnson again. That's what I'm going to be doing. Splits! <laughs> All right, well, you got anything else? No, that's, I'm good for the week, man. All right, guys. Well, as always, thanks for joining us. We won't catch you next week, but uh, we'll catch you in two weeks for uh, yes. episode 69. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's going to be a special it's one. You're going to be... Movie. But uh, There's as always, so much innuendo in that episode. <laughs> yeah, there will be some strong innuendos. It may also be our NFL episode. We are going. It'll be the weekend before NFL kickoff. So last year we tried it and failed miserably. We had bad video. This year maybe we'll try it again and see how it goes. Yeah. But it will not be an entire NFL episode. It'll just be a fun. That'll be our segment. Is we'll do an NFL segment. So those of mm -hmm. you who love the sports ball like we do, get ready. Prepare yourselves. For those who don't like sports ball, we're still going to come with lots of fun and entertaining entertaining, yes. entertaining things. So you've also and, been warned. And just so you know, even though the bulk of our audience is in Seattle, there are other teams than no, the Seattle not. Seahawks. Just so you guys know, just just reminding people. It's going to be world they're... champs again, Ryan. World champs. All right, whatever. On that note, thanks everybody for joining us. And we'll catch you guys on the flip side. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Split kick. <laughs> No punch! Bang! Later. Hey everybody, uh, bonus segment. So apparently me and Ryan forgot to do From the Faithful 50, mostly me, and since I'm the host, I will take this, I will own this.
You know what? I'll take partial responsibility. And I had a question, a, a personal question from someone very close to me. Uh, well, absolutely. needless to say, we were not going to go without answering the Faithful 50. So, if you have gotten all the way to the end of this episode, episode 68, and we're like, where's our questions? If you stuck to the end, guess what? Yeah. Bonus segment, we're bringing the Faithful 50, and we're tacking it on to the end of this episode. So, if yeah. there's a weird, awkward edit in between, it's because I had to weird, awkwardly edit it to get it on yeah. the show. If there's like a, a quick, like, explosion <laughs> emoji gift thing going on. No, there's Dubs. none of that. Basically, it'll just be like, till the next time, guys. And then it'll just be my face again in a weird position where it wasn't right. before going, Hey, everybody! Right. We're back! So, All right, so what, do, what do we got this From week? the Faithful 50, first up, Faithful 50 member Jeff would like to know, What is Brian West, this guy's, go-to drink when he wants to have a bad Sunday morning? He must have seen my Facebook post about drinking. Yes too much so my go-to when i want to have a bad sunday morning is literally any and everything i can get my hands on because if you have a go-to drink it's usually a good go-to drink and it's not a i want to get so fucked up i don't remember where i am and have the world's mm -hmm. worst hangover the next day go-to drink yeah that's that's a good way of just like oh here's alcohol here's some juice yeah so my particular my alcohol. particular vice on saturday night was uh started with white rum then it went to Captain. Then it went to Captain Morgan's, and then it went to uh, Pendleton whiskey, and then it went to Hornitos tequila, and then it went oh back to. God. Then it went back to Pendleton's whiskey. Then it went to beer, and then it went to uh, I don't know, some shitty tequila, and then it How's went to blackout. How's your liver feeling right now? Hmm? How's your liver right now? It hurts. Yeah. I'm strong. I'm strong <laughs> in the force. Yeah. Needless to say, I had a rough morning the next day. So that's my that's my go-to. Uh, if I'm just sipping alcohol by myself or just in a normal setting where I don't want to get wasty pants, I yeah. enjoy a nice scotch on the rocks. I'm a I'm a I'm a rocks guy, or uh, I don't know, pretty much. I I fondly remember sitting at a barbecue in Vegas, sipping scotch before we went and lost all of our money, but it was good times. Yes, that is how I roll. So, thank you, Jeff, for your question. Uh, yeah. Brian from Washington would like to know what our favorite TV show growing up was as a kid, and what is our kids? Uh, what are our kids' favorite shows now? Hmm. My favorite TV show as a kid, animated. I'll probably say there was a Conan the Barbarian show. Of course, it was. I don't know why I've always loved fucking Conan the Barbarian ever since I was a kid, and it was like I could watch it if I got up just in time. I could watch the, the show, and like right when it ended, if I grabbed my bag and I fucking sprinted as fast as I could, I would not miss the bus before it came in the morning. And so that was my thing every single morning, is I'd watch Conan the Barbarian show and just like be like half ready to go like right when it ended, just fucking sprint as fast as I could so that I wouldn't <laughs> miss the bus. I don't know, I just remembered it. <laughs> remember that right now my kids my my son watched like every season of Pokemon and uh, my daughter into like some of the Amazon shows like just add magic uh, about like these girls that find a cookbook that when they bake and cook stuff and has magic spells so she's into that so uh, my favorite about... show growing up non-animated probably as a kid was probably Knight Rider I loved Knight Rider I remember every week getting ready for Night Rider. It's like, yes, Night Rider. I <laughs> um, also loved The Incredible Hulk and 60, 66 Batman, which was always rerunning. Um, loved superheroes even from a young age. Uh, my favorite animated shows, probably as a little kid, was I loved Transformers. Loved Transformers. I cried yeah. when I was a kid when Optimus died in the movie. You know, and Hot Rod. I still remember that song. You got the touch. Woo! You got the power. It was a great movie. And uh, animated, as I got a little bit older, it's probably a toss up between Batman the Animated Series and X Men the Animated Series. So, oh, not really, 90 X Men. Fantastic shows, both of them. And then I always have the big payoff in it. Yeah, great shows. 
Thank you. Oh, with my daughters? Let's see. Well, my daughter's favorite show right now are probably anything that's on television. They are so ADD yeah. when it comes to cartoons. They have so yeah. many selections. We watch Ninja Turtles together, the new Nickelodeon show. We like that one a lot. Um, they're really big on that DC Superhero High Girls show that we uh, that I reviewed a few weeks ago. They love that. They just keep watching it on, on DVD pretty much every day. Yeah. Uh, they like Tinkerbell. I don't know. Like I said, anything that's on, they're just fine cartoons. They really like Teen mm -hmm. Titans Go a lot. Yeah. I don't know if my kids watch that. It's super I'm going around to it. She let him watch it. There's a, lot of fart, there's a lot of fart jokes, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Brian, for your question. Chris from Washington, who found himself with a lovely new set of Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, he wants to know who I would pick for, my, for the first round of fantasy football. Gee, Chris, I wonder why you're asking that question. Could it be that you know somebody who's in a league who might be listening to the show? I'm just going to say that I would draft a kicker. Always draft a kicker in the first round yes. of every fantasy football league. Especially one from the Raiders because the you know that dude's going to be a kick the uh, fat shit kicker. Because he looks at, that, he looks at that, that football like it's a hot dog every time. And he's just like, mmm. I don't know where to put that sauce. Right kicker, between. Chris. There you go. Thanks for your question. Let's see. And then we got Philip, Faithful Phil, who is back. Welcome back, Phil, yes. again. I think we said welcome back like three times. He shows up and then disappears yeah. again, and then shows up and then disappears. Let's well, just assume he's back now. All right, he's back. No more welcome back, but welcome back, Phil. Yes. Uh, he wants to know, too, has two questions. One, he wants to know, is he the only geek dad that is Jack that is almost hunting season? And in a follow-up, any chance we can get the podcast uploads fixed before I go elk hunting? So I'm going to I'm gonna throw it to Ryan. Yes. Uh, Phil, I will do it for you. I will have everything up this Saturday. Right. He's very committed. And Phil has a yeah. gun, so you better be on your game, Ryan. You well, it depends distance. how well of a shot he is. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think you can hit Philadelphia, so I think you're probably safe. Okay, that's uh, I don't know. I'm not really a hunter. Never really. Nobody ever took me hunting when I was a kid, so I never really got into it. I'm not against it. I just never yes. really got into it. I grew up, my dad hunted every season. I shot a deer, a little tiny spike. But, uh, yeah, it's, I love elk meat. I love deer meat. I do love so. elk and deer meat. That is true. Oh, Why did yes. you ask me that question? We would have been like, totally, yes. We're totally excited to eat. Yeah. You know, when you shoot your deer elk, make me some steaks. Yeah. Or slice it and smoke it and make elk venison or jerky. Yeah, that too. I'll take either or. Geek Dad Report will definitely consume. Consume. We'll consume Phil's smoky meats. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Phil. Uh, second question he wants to know, is he the only one who, he also wants to know if he's the only one who's also jacked for the much more and accurate remake of Stephen King's It. As somebody that first read the book at 11 years old and has burned through it three times, he thinks that it's going to be badass. So um, are you the only one who's jacked? Yes, because I'm frankly terrified of that. Yeah, I, I... I had to look at the image from like the side of my vision like as much as I could because if I knew I looked directly at it, I might shit my pants when they showed Pennywise so on that fun, one. So fun story, when I was a kid I read the book because I read all Stephen King books. I got three quarters of the way through the book and uh, my parents decided that their church had told them the Stephen King books that books, the, the sermon was that books actually carry demons that can infect your children. So they uh -huh. actually took my Stephen King hit book and burnt it in front of me. True story. And I never got to finish the book. And so I couldn't pick up another copy because they were watching me. And uh, I never finished the movie because I didn't like the original movie all that much. It was really long. And so I've only ever watched or read three quarters of it. So I'm really excited to see how it ends. <laughs> I heard I heard it's a giant spider. Spoiler alert. I don't know. An alien spider. Yeah. I thought it was a turtle or something. I don't know. It's kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> but I'm... I'm I don't, I'm terrified of the clown, but I'm I am looking forward to seeing the movie. Yeah. I think it's I, gonna be really I will fun. not see it. Oh, he was. Because I'm a I'm a bitch. I'm I just can't do it. I'm a wuss. Well, I I don't like horror movies, but I'll watch it anyway because unlike Ryan, I am not scared of things. Well, that's not true. I'm scared of lots of things. Yeah. I hate sharks. Fucking sharks. I hate sharks. <laughs> anyway, lasers attached to their head. Sharks are so I still lasers. have one. I got one last question. All right. Uh, I have one from Jen in Philadelphia. 
and uh, she said, today is the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service. What is your favorite national park? Because I know you like going outdoors. Yep. So, so we got to do national park. So that's like Yellowstone. My favorite national park is Glacier National Park in Montana. That's a good one. I'm going to go with Yellowstone. Okay, that's the only really big one that I've been to. And that was like our first big family trip that we did. Like where we actually like road trip and didn't murder everybody, each other. I was only went one time and they were closed two weeks for park renovation. Oh, you got to be kidding me. This is back Seriously? before the internet and my family did not think ahead to call the hotline. Oh my God. But Yellowstone was awesome. It was so much deep. We had a buffalo, like, literally, like, brushing up against our car. And we're, like, just waiting for it to, just, cool. like, fucking knock the car over. Yeah. It was well, so awesome. Montana, Wyoming, if you like buffalo, they got a lot of them out yeah. there. And there's some, they got some great what? national parks. Is there one that you haven't been to that you want to go to? Yellowstone National Park. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much that one. Um, Glacier, my pick, though, my pick, Jen, would be Glacier National Park up in northern Montana. Um, beautiful place, great scenery, amazing mountains, so many trails, lots of wildlife. Just a really beautiful place. I mean, there's nothing, spe yeah. spe you know, special that you can say stands out except for they hand you they hand you flyers that say "Do not molest the bears." Personally, I feel if you're brave enough to try and molest a bear, that's on you. I mean, yeah, yeah. If I you want to go molest like a my... grizzly bear, that's on you. Yeah. I would say my close second would be Zion National Park, that's in southern Utah. Because you get so many layers and, like, the, the deep red colors and everything. It's so fucking beautiful and, like, crazy how about, down uh, there. how about the Redwood? Is that a national park down in California? Yeah, that's the national park. That place would be my second follow. That place was awesome. I went through there one time, and those trees are goddamn ginormous. Yeah, I, I actually haven't been to Grand Canyon. I haven't been to Grand Canyon. That's not yeah, a park. That's a canyon. The only, the only well, it's a national park. But the only reason why we went to Zion... Is because even though this is the day in the internet and we didn't call ahead, we went the wrong direction. Just if you want to go to the one that's got the big glass thing, mm -hmm. um, that's open uh, at a certain time of the year. We were going. You need to go down to Vegas and and all that stuff to go there. But we put in our GPS and didn't realize it was taking us to the other side of the Grand Canyon that was closed. Nice, good work. So when we almost got there. You had to go and, somewhere? <laughs> yeah, so we just stayed in town. We stopped at, which it turned out to be really cool. Cause we, it was just a little tiny town and like the visitor center got like this 98 year old dude that's like, well here's all the stuff you can do. And, and actually, I, I was here when they this found is, the design in This is where. This is where John Wayne films one of his movies. This is where John Wayne personally defeated all the Indians. I don't think that <laughs> happened, sir. I think you just made that up. <laughs> but no, and that's how and then we ended up, we were close to Zion, so we just went there the next day. But, yeah, so I, all right, I would well, say that. So, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen, for your question. We appreciate it very much. Yeah. All right, on that note, uh, once again, it. we say thanks for watching, and we won't see yeah. you guys next week, but we'll see you in two weeks. Yes, have a good one, people. Have a great, happy day, Labor Day weekend. Yes. Don't pull a Brian and drink way too yeah. much and regret it the next day. Yeah, don't get Brian drunk. What? No. Stupid. Just totally get me drunk. Yeah, get I'm you way drunk, awesome. but don't get... Just don't get Brian drunk. Level. Yeah, Brian level. Don't get that drunk. level. Yeah. All right, whatever, man. Later, guys. Peace. <laughs> <Hey>, gals. <laughs>